In the beginning, when the universe was still new and pristine, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was a formless void, darkness covered the deep waters, and the Spirit of God hovered over the surface of the waters. Then God spoke light into existence, separating it from the darkness. He called the light day and the darkness night. Evening passed and morning came, the first day. On the second day, God created the vast expanse of sky to separate the waters above from the waters below. The skyline emerged, stretching endlessly in all directions. Evening passed and morning came, the second day. On the third day, God's voice thundered, let the waters beneath the sky be gathered into one place so that dry land may appear. The waters flowed together at his command, revealing sprawling continents and islands. God called the dry ground land and the gathered waters seas. Satisfied with his work, he then said, let the earth sprout vegetation, plants yielding seeds according to their kinds and trees bearing fruit with seed in it according to their kinds. In an instant, lush greenery burst forth, blanketing the land in every shade of emerald. Trees heavy with ripe fruit swayed in a gentle breeze, their branches dancing with life. The sweet fragrance of blossoms and fertile soil filled the air. God looked over the vegetation and it was good. Evening passed and morning came, the third day. On the fourth day, God created lights in the expanse of the sky to separate day from night and to mark seasons, days, and years. He made the greater light, the sun, to govern the day and the lesser light, the moon, to govern the night. He adorned the night sky with a shimmering tapestry of stars. Evening passed and morning came, the fourth day. On the fifth day, God populated the seas and skies with living creatures. With a sweep of his hand, the waters teemed with gliding fish and undulating creatures of every kind and the air filled with the beating of wings as birds soared overhead. God blessed them and said, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters of the seas and let birds multiply on the earth. Evening passed and morning came, the fifth day. Then on the sixth day, God turned his attention to the land. Let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, livestock, creatures that move along the ground and wild, animals. As his voice rang out, a stunning array of animals came to life and roamed the land, from the mightiest beasts to the most humble and unassuming creatures. God provided lush vegetation for them to eat, but his work was not yet finished. God then said, let us make human beings in our image after our likeness to rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air over the livestock and over all the earth itself and every creature that crawls upon the earth. So God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed the breath of life into his nostrils. Man became a living person. God blessed the first humans and gave them domain over all the living creatures. Be fruitful and multiply, he instructed them. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air and every creature that crawls upon the earth. To sustain the first humans, God planted a magnificent garden in a region called Eden in the east. He caused to spring up from the ground every tree pleasing to the sight and good for food, including the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. A river flowed from Eden to water the garden, and from there it separated into four headwaters. God placed the man, whose name was Adam, in the Garden of Eden to work it and watch over it. You may eat the fruit of any tree in the garden, God said, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For in the day that you eat from it, you will certainly die. Adam named all the living creatures as God paraded them before him. Yet for Adam, no suitable helper was found. So God caused Adam to fall into a deep sleep and he took one of Adam's ribs and created a woman from it. When Adam awoke, God presented the woman to him. This one at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh, Adam exclaimed joyfully. She will be called woman, for she was taken from man. The two were naked and felt no shame. Now the serpent was the most cunning of all the creatures God had made. One day he approached the woman, whose name was Eve, as she was admiring the forbidden tree. Did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? The serpent asked slyly. We may eat from the trees of the garden, Eve replied. But about the fruit of the tree in the middle of the garden, God said, you must not eat from it or touch it or you will die. You won't die, the serpent hissed with a cunning smile. God knows that in the day you eat from it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Eve gazed upon the tree's luscious fruit, so enticing to the eyes. She imagined how delightful it would taste and how wise she would become by eating it.
Succumbing to the serpent's clever deception, Eve reached out and took some of the fruit and ate it. She then gave some to Adam, who was with her, and he too ate it. In that moment, their eyes were opened and they suddenly felt naked and ashamed. They sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. Toward the evening on that fateful day, the man and woman heard the sound of God walking in the garden. Feeling guilt and fear, they hid among the trees. But God called out to Adam, Where are you? I heard you in the garden, Adam replied, his voice trembling. And I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. Who told you that you were naked? God asked. Did you eat from the tree I commanded you not to eat from? The man grew defiant. The woman you gave me, she gave me some fruit from the tree and I ate it. God turned to Eve. What have you done? The serpent deceived me, Eve admitted shamefully. That's why I ate it. So God issued consequences for their disobedience. To the serpent, he declared, Because you have done this, you are cursed more than any livestock and wild animals. You will crawl on your belly and eat dust all the days of your life. I will put hostility between you and the woman and between your offspring and her offspring. He will strike your head and you will strike his heel. To Eve, he said, I will greatly multiply your labor pains, and in anguish you will give birth. Your desire will be for your husband, yet he will rule over you. And to Adam, he said, Because you listened to your wife and ate from the tree which I commanded you not to eat, the ground is cursed because of you. All your life you will struggle to scratch a living from it. It will grow thorns and thistles, and you'll have to work hard just to eat bread by the sweat of your brow. For you were made from dust, and to the dust you will return. God then made clothing from animal skins for Adam and Eve. But because they had disobeyed his command by eating the forbidden fruit, God expelled them from the Garden of Eden to keep them away from the Tree of Life. So Adam named his wife Eve because she was the mother of all the living. And after leaving Eden, Eve became pregnant and gave birth to Cain. Later she gave birth to another son, Abel. Adam and Eve lost paradise by disobeying God, yet even in their punishment he showed them mercy. For embedded in the consequences was the promise that Eve's future offspring would one day strike the head of the serpent, destroying evil and making a way for restoration. Though they were banished from Edens, the garden remained as a symbol of God's intended perfection, a vision of the eternal paradise that will one day be regained by those who follow him. Adam and Eve's tragic disobedience stained the world, but it could not ultimately thwart God's magnificent plan for redeeming humanity. The story of Eden serves as a powerful parable of our own tendencies toward rebellion. Like Adam and Eve, we are all born into a beautiful world provided by our caring Creator. Yet our sinful nature, enticed by deception, causes us to turn our backs on God's guidance and righteousness. Just as the first humans were expelled from Eden's paradise, we too experience the heartache of separation from God when we defy His wisdom and commands. But He graciously provides a path back to restored fellowship with Him through Jesus.